hey guys, in this video I'm going to use an online simulation from the University of Colorado called FET to talk to you about shapes of molecules. We are going to be looking at lone pairs, how that influences the, the bending in molecules, the bond angles in molecules, the molecular geometry and the electron geometry. Here we have our first molecule, water. You can see over here the list of all the molecules we're going to go through. Now, ideally, I want you to go and try this for yourself, but I'm going to go through all of these just in case you don't have access to FET. So here we have water, who is hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. If I just turn this around a bit, you can see our lone pairs up here. And these are big, big um, blobs of electron repulsion here. If I shift this down for you a bit, you can see the bond angle in water is 104. It is bent and it has a tetrahedral electron geometry. So that's taking into account the lone pairs as well as the two hydrogens over here. But because we don't really draw the lone pairs when we're just drawing the molecule, the molecule geometry is just stated as bent. Moving on, we have carbon dioxide. You can see oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. And if I move this around, you can see that it is going to be a linear molecule. It is 180 degree bond angle on there. Sulfur dioxide now. Here we have double bonds in between the sulfur and the oxygen. We have a bond angle of 119 and we have our lone pair up here. The electron geometry is going to be trigonal planar, but what we actually are going to see is that it's going to be a bent molecule. Uh, xenon difluoride here, lots and lots of things going on here. This actually works out to be a linear molecule but there's lots of lone or oh, three sets of lone pairs going on around here which is going to give it a trigonal bipyramidal shape if we're looking at the electron geometry but just looking at the molecule geometry it is just going to be linear boron trifluoride here um, now this is one of the slightly unusual ones because it has 120 bond angle around here, no lone pairs. It is going to be trigonal planar in both its molecule geometry and in its electron geometry. Here we have a nice chlorine in the middle and three fluorines around the outside. Here we have our lone pairs making each bond angle 87.5. It is going to give us a T-shape if we are just looking at it um, based on the molecules, but it is going to be trigonal by pyramidal if we're looking at it including the electron lone pairs. Ammonia here. Now we have our lone pair here at the top. You can see that our bond angles are about 107 of 108 three sets of hydrogens just popping down there at the bottom. So the molecule geometry is going to be trigonal, pyramidal, but if we're taking into account this lone pair, which generally sits at the top, it is going to have a tetrahedral geometry in um, relation to its electrons. Methane here, so also tetrahedral in relation to its electrons, but you can see it has a different bond angle, it's 109. So that is larger than the bond angle that we just had in ammonia. And the molecule shape here is again, well, tetrahedral for methane. SF4, this gives us a lone pair up here. And then four fluorines floating around the outside. And you can see there are actually a couple of different bond angles going on if we just move that around. So we have um, 102 rounding up here and then 88 
at the back here. This is what we call a seesaw geometry. This one doesn't come up very often. Here we have another lovely molecule. If I just rearrange like that for you, you can see it is going to be a square planar molecule. But if you look at the molecule geometry, taking into account these two um, large sets of lone pairs here, it is actually going to be octahedral into electron geometry. If we look at our bond angles, they are all 90 degrees around this square planar shape. Here we have another one. We've got our bromine in the middle, our fluorines around the outside, and a massive lone pair up here. This is square pyramidal, if I just try and get that one up to the top, move that one up a little bit, you can see the flat bit there. So we've got a square base and then we've got um, a top to the pyramid up there and then the lone pairs coming down the bottom. But again, because we've got um, one, two, three in our square top and bottom, the electron geometry is going to be octahedral. Here is a lovely one, PCL5. This one comes up a lot. Um, it is trigonal by pyramidal, which means if I just make that bit flat for you, we're going to have a triangle with the top of a pyramid and a bottom of a pyramid. Um, the bond angles in this one, 120 or 90 depending on which angles you are looking at so be careful with this one because it is one of the ones the tricky ones that has two different types of bond angles and then our last one sf6 this is octahedral we can see if i just flatten that out for you we've got our square um, our pyramid base there and then top and the bottom and our bond angles in this one no matter where we move it around on 90 degrees. Okay guys, if you do get the chance, I strongly recommend you go and um, play with this because um, the fact it's an excellent website, they've got loads of fantastic simulations on there and it also gives you a really, really good um, 3D appreciation of how the molecules look in space.